Good morning. Welcome to worship here at First Presbyterian Church. We're so glad that you were able to join us today for this time together. My name is Adam Knudsen, and I am still privileged to serve as the pastor here, and so glad to be able to welcome you to the time of worship. A little extra excitement today. We have our back-to-school backpack blessing and kickoff. We have a potluck immediately following this service. If you um, brought food to share for the potluck, awesome. If you didn't bring food today, that's okay. We recently studied the five loaves and two fish miracle, and we are certain that God will multiply what we have to be more than enough for everybody who shows up. And you know Presbyterians can cook, so you are not going to want to miss that. We have a special blessing during the service as well. All the kids who are here, we invite you to come down, bring your backpacks. We have a little gift for you, and then um, a blessing as well. Also downstairs during the time, all the kids who come, if we'll, we'll have a spot for you to line up your backpacks. We'll have a table for congregation members to make cards. And if you just want to make a special card and stick it in a backpack, you might know whose backpack it is or you might not. Just we're praying for you. God loves you. We hope you have a great year um, because we know that those things that we carry with us are, are so meaningful and so important. Let's see. Um, as some of you have noticed, perhaps, our church has a website, but um, it's not awesome. So we are remodeling that website and redoing it, and one of the best parts um, to show the life and vibrancy of our congregation is pictures, um, and many of the pictures are on your phones and your cameras. So um, if you know how to deal with a QR code, there will be some papers downstairs. You can scan it, um, upload photos from our church to, your, to our Smug Mug account and we'll be able to use those. If you don't know any of the words that I'm saying, find somebody who has a backpack and ask them, <laughs> and they will be able to help you out. Also, if you get our church newsletter, um, there was a link in that this week. You could click that, and you would be able to upload some um, pictures, either if from your phone camera or from your computer, if that's where they are. Um, let's see. Um, our Congregational Care Committee is here to help and serve you if there's any members of our church, community that seem to be slipping through, they might be missed, they're not getting to church, or maybe they need a visit, let our congregational care committee know. Our chair for that is uh, Glenna Books, and um, we'll make sure that, that nobody gets missed and nobody falls through. Um, yeah, I think that's it. If you'd like our newsletter that shares a lot of the things that I've just mentioned, we have hard copies in the back, or you can always email our church office, office at... FPCRC, so that's the acronym for, or initials, First Presbyterian Church, Rapid City, office at fpcrc.org, and we can make sure to get you um, a digital copy of our newsletter each week. It's got informational notes. It's also got an incredibly moving, powerful, spiritually warming um, message from your pastor every week, so we're going to know that you're going to want to make sure to read that and find that encouragement as well. But here we are gathered in God's house to worship together, I invite you all to quiet your hearts and minds as we prepare for worship. Good morning. Uh, please stand as you're able for our call to worship. 
from Isaiah 43. But now this is what the Lord says, he who created you, Jacob, and he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Our gathering him to God be the glory. Please remain standing for the prayer of confession. In the presence of Almighty God and before one another, let us confess our sin and the things that hinder us in leading a faithful life as God's people. Merciful God, when lashed by life's windstorms, we often lash out in return. Forgive us when we blame you or others for our troubles. Teach us to find you in the eye of the storm. Show us the calm center that comes from your word of peace. Amen. Hear now these words of witness of scripture. God listens, God helps. Now is the day of salvation. Open wide your hearts and receive God's forgiveness. Amen and amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. As you are able, as you wish, I invite you to share a sign of Christ's peace with one another this morning.
Thanks for you. Oh, yeah. Amen. Great singing, and you may be seated. I'd like to invite the kids who are here this morning to come on down, bring your backpacks if you've got them, and join me for a time together. Any teachers who are here with your bags and backpacks, you can bring them down, or when we say the blessing, you can just hold them open. I'm sure you can catch it over there as well. Come on down. Got those pencils? Yeah, a good group. When, the, when we're... Oh, from heaven, that's where they're from. Yeah, when, when we say we're going to bless our kids for the school year, I think our families understand how important that is. Oakley, Gabriel, you guys can come over here. Come on down. So my first question, what do you have in your backpacks? Nothing. They're empty, ready to be filled. You got some things? I'm sure, I'm sure you do. Do I want to know about them? Not many. What do you have? <laughs> some toys? Some toys? Ooh, flashcards? Yeah, what do I have? I got, a, I got a computer. Any of you carry laptops in your backpacks? Some of the big kids do. You're not allowed to yet? Yeah, when you get the... Okay. Okay, I got some books. Do you ever carry books in your backpack? I got a book about hope. I was talking to Donnie about that already. Post-it notes, wide out. Some pencils, some pens. Ooh, cool, I got a cross. That'll help. I got receipts for pizza. You got a Sharpie? Not for in the church, though, right? Some stuff, yeah. Lots of, and, and then, are your bags kind of empty as well? You got room for, room for improvement? So some of, some of the folks from our church, we got some very cool colored pencils. Do you want to carry those around, or should we pass them around? Maybe we just pass them around. You want to help. Okay. All right. You, got, you don't need it. If you want another pencil or two, grab some. If you don't, you know, you don't have to. It's not mandatory. So the school year, what are you guys looking forward to? Absolutely nothing. nothing. <laughs> Summer's over. There's nothing else to look forward to. All right. Well, we'll pray for you, too, and your teacher. How about you? Anything to look forward to? Eco week? Is that a cool time at school? Oh, you're going to look forward to seeing your friends at school? And art? Excited for art? How many of you are excited for PE class? How many of you are excited for music class? 
All right, good. Miss Albrecht over there. We're back here. She'll be happy to see that. How many of you are excited for math class? A few of you, okay. How many of you are excited for history? Yeah, I love history. I do not. Not mine. How about English? No. We, we already speak English. Not ready. Too many languages? Yeah. Here in our country, we only speak one language, and we can't even do that very well, huh? Spanish? You'd rather take Spanish? Okay, we can talk. We can talk sometime. Did you guys get enough pencils? Hey. Anybody? Okay, that is not Spanish, but we can work on it later. More pencils? No? All right. So today we'll kind of cross a couple themes. Today we are focusing on our third window, which is this one over here. It kind of has a boat and a wave and an oar. You can see it there or you can see it on the screen if it's easier for you to see. And the disciples were scared because there was a big storm and Jesus was just sleeping. And they were like, what's the deal? Aren't you going to help us? Aren't you going to save us? And Jesus said, relax. It's okay. Calm down. Don't be afraid. And I think in a similar way, we have our backpacks, and our backpacks are going to go with us to school this year, but God is going to go with us too. So if you can, I'd like you to open up your backpack, okay? And it's just kind of a symbol. It's opened up, it's opened up because I'm going to say, we're going to say a blessing and a prayer, and I want for all of that blessing to go into your backpacks, okay? Okay? I want for all of it to go in there. And after the church, hopefully you're able to stay for the potluck. And downstairs, we're going to line up all our backpacks on, the, um, on a pew. And when the people from our church make cards, they're going to put them in there as a reminder that even if your backpack doesn't have anything, God goes with you. And look at all these people. Can you guys see out there? Do you want to stand up and look? Look at all those people. All those people are praying for you. All those people love you. All those people want you to know that God is with you. All of those people are your church family. Isn't that incredible? Because you maybe haven't seen any of those people before. Like some of them are totally new to you. But they're praying for you and they love you, okay? And that's what we want you to remember when you go to church. So when you go to school. So if you didn't get enough, colored pencils, and you need some more. Some of these are good. Just, well, they have brightly, there are pencils that are brightly colored. I'm sorry. Just throw one in the bottom of your backpack, and you'll probably forget about it. And then, like, in April or May, and you'll be, like, really stressed out about something, and you'll be like, oh, yeah, my church family is praying for me. Oh, yeah, I'm not alone. I remember at church, Pastor Adam told me, that God is with me. Does anybody else need some more pencils? You need a couple more? Anybody else? A couple more? You need some more, Everly? Perfect. Anybody else? No? Okay, we might have some downstairs if you decide later. We also have a little, a special thing. Our, um, our, our, our committee wanted to make sure that we mark certain milestones. And so we have one person who is going to be going to high school for the first time, and that is Alexandra. And so we have a special book for her with a journal and um, just some places to remember that God is with her. She's going to be going to high school for the first time. And her high school has a... If there's anybody else that's making a transition that we didn't let us know, we'll get you guys stuff too, okay? Um, but I want, I want to say this prayer and this blessing. So if you guys will open up your backpacks, and any teachers out there, if you've got your bag or your purse, open it up. We know you need these blessings. If you don't have it, a bucket, hands, whatever you can to catch this, okay? And I'm going to say this prayer for all of us today. God, bless these backpacks and the children who carry them. May these backpacks shield them from harsh words and a harsh world. May these, back, make the, may these packs carry your spirit, and may our children carry home learning, 
memories, and stories to share. God bless these children and the parents who make them pose for pictures before the first day of school. Bless all our children climbing on school buses, backpacks heavy with hope, anxious for acceptance, and needy for nourishing. Bless our children who aren't as innocent as we'd like, our children for whom active shooter drills are routine and thoughts and prayers aren't enough. God bless our parents who have laughed, played, traveled, mediated, intervened, fed, and nourished all summer long. Parents who are ready and not so ready for school to start and summer days to end. Bless our parents who pack backpacks, make lunches, create schedules and to-do lists for toddlers and teenagers difficult to get out the morning door. Bless them with patience, grace for themselves and their children. Bless them with long memories of these days that pass too quickly when not noticed. God bless our teachers, school administrators, and support staff, those to whom we entrust our children all year long. Bless them with appreciation for their invaluable work. Bless them with needed supplies they don't have to pay for out of pocket. Bless them with New Year excitement, toothy grins, and students who love to learn. Bless them with the kind of joy that comes when you know you are meeting society's need through your chosen profession. Gather us, O God, around our children, parents, teachers, and school staff as this new school year begins. Anoint us with your grace. Fill us with your love. Inspire us with your service. Bless us as a community, guided by your spirit, called to care for and nurture the young. For the sake of their future and ours, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I, I'm so glad that you're here. I hope you'll be able to come downstairs for our potluck. We'll have face painting. We'll get extra blessings in your backpacks. Um, there will be some other fun activities, lots of food. I know that my family, all that we brought were desserts. So if everyone else brings desserts, did you bring donuts? Uh, do we have donuts today? I'm not sure. We'll see. <clears throat> lemon bars. We brought lemon bars and cookies. It'll be great. Okay. So you all can return to your seats. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Studying through the windows on our wall here, my daughter has decided that she will be reading the scriptures each week. This morning, our scripture passage for our third window comes from the Gospel of Mark, the fourth chapter, beginning with the 35th verse. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. <clears throat> Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat, they were also there were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boats so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, "Teacher, don't you care if we drown?" He got up rebuked. and he got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, "Quiet, be still." Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, "Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith?" They, they were terrified and asked each other, "Who is this?" Even the wind and the waves obey him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace to you all from the God who was and is and is still yet to come. Amen. Today we continue our sermon series as we journey through the miracles of Jesus as they're depicted and recorded here on the stained glass windows in this worship space. We have the image on the front cover of your bulletin. We have the image on the screens, or you can see the window there, counting from the front. We're on number three. 
Jesus finds himself in the boat with the disciples and in the midst of the storm. Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Are there times in life when you wondered, God, don't you care? Are you paying attention? What's wrong with you, God? Why don't you intervene to help? Jesus' disciples knew that Jesus had power to work miracles, to save, to help them avoid disaster, and yet it didn't seem like Jesus had plans to act. He wasn't worried. He wasn't concerned. In fact, as Scripture states, he wasn't even awake. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. Jesus is sleeping, and the disciples wake Jesus up, yelling at him, Master, we are perishing. Jesus wakes up, calms the storm, and he asks them, Where is your faith? As we reflect on this story, let us first consider the disciples' reaction. Their fear is palpable. Their panic is evident. These are seasoned fishermen. This isn't the first time they've been on the water. Probably not the first time when waves and wind tossed up. But they were overtaken by terror. How often do we find ourselves in similar situations? The storms of life, perhaps financial struggles, health issues, relationship woes, unexpected weather or disasters like California saying, what do we do for a hurricane? I think somebody, one of my friends in California posted that they were at the grocery store and everybody was there to buy stuff and they said, what are we supposed to get? Or maybe realizing, oh no, we don't have backpacks. We don't have our new shoes. School is only a few days away. But you moms seem to be doing a great job. Those backpacks looked good. Good work. Maybe the uncertainties of the future. Any of these things can leave us feeling overwhelmed, like a boat tossed by stormy waters. In contrast, we see Jesus calm, sleeping in the midst of chaos. His reaction may seem puzzling at first, but I think that it reveals a profound truth for us about faith. Jesus knew that the storm would come, yet he remained at peace fully trusting God's control. Jesus fully trusted the one who created the heavens and the earth, the skies and the seas and all that is in them. It's a picture of unwavering faith, a faith rooted in the knowledge of who is in control, regardless of the circumstances. And I think it challenges us to examine our own reactions when we are faced with trials. Do we allow fear to grip our hearts Or do we, like Jesus, rest in the assurance that God's plan is unfolding, that God is in control even in the, or perhaps especially, in the midst of adversity? In the midst of uncertainty, how do we balance the reality of faith with all the reasons that seem so obvious to fear? As the disciples awaken Jesus, his response is equally instructive. Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Jesus' words cut to the heart of the matter. Fear and faith are interconnected. They are two sides of the same coin, representing our response to life's challenges. Fear is a natural human emotion, but it becomes a stumbling block when it overshadows our faith. The disciples had witnessed Jesus' miracles and teachings, yet their fear revealed a lack of faith in his power to overcome this particular storm. Do you have storms that are too big for God? In our own lives, faith and fear are ongoing tensions. The question is not whether we will experience fear, but how we will respond to it. Will we allow fear to paralyze us, or will we choose to exercise faith even in the face of uncertainty? It's worth noting that Jesus does not berate the disciples for feeling fear. Rather, he encourages them to strengthen their faith. Similarly, we are not called to suppress our fears either, but to acknowledge them and bring them to the one who is able to calm all the storms. In the boat, the disciples were frantically bailing water. 
out, trying to keep the ship from being swamped, trying to steer the ship towards safety. Their fear drove them to attempt to control the situation themselves. In contrast, faith allows us to surrender control to God, trusting his wisdom and goodness. And isn't that the truth for us? Fear is exhausting. So, so tiring. I really like the phrase, you can pray or you can worry, but you can't do both. Faith allows them to surrender control to God, trusting his wisdom and goodness. And as disciples, we are also called to trust God with our lives, recognizing that he holds our destiny in his hands. Maybe you heard when I was praying those blessings for our kids, I got a little choked up. When we send them out into the world each day, we don't know what's going to happen. We have no clue. We can send them to good schools with good people and good teachers, and we can hope for the best. But the same way that they were in your control, parents, when they were sleeping in their beds or snacking in your kitchen or playing in your pool or playing out in the street or driving their, riding their bikes in the road, we weren't in control of what happened to them this summer, and we weren't in control of what happens to them when they go to school. Only God is in control. We have ideas, we have resources, we have a strong work ethic, but our lives, our world, everything is in God's hands all the time, whether we admit it or not. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. I, I know they sung that song in California. I wasn't no, sure if they had it here in South Dakota also. <laughs> it's a song that we learned as children. Do we believe it? The disciples were fixated on the storm and the imminent danger it posed. Faith, however, sees beyond the immediate circumstances and grasps the bigger picture of God's plan. When we face trials, let us remember that God works in the midst of all things. And like I mentioned yes, last Sunday, I don't believe that God causes things to happen that are bad so that we can learn a lesson. It's not everything happens for a reason. But in the midst of bad things that are not what God wants for us, in the midst of consequences of bad choices, in the midst of consequences of evil in the world, in the midst of all of these things, God is with us. Like our kids who take these backpacks, and I wanted them to open them up so that the blessings we would go in and they might be protected. Sad truth is that some kids take backpacks to school, and those backpacks actually have bulletproof coverings on them because we're afraid. We don't know what will happen. Most of our kids here probably don't take bulletproof backpacks to school, but hopefully they will be safe knowing that they are loved and cared for and their community's prayers go with them. God is with me. God will never leave us or forsake us. Fear feeds on all of the what ifs, worst case scenarios. Faith on the other hand, anchors itself in the promises of God's word. By meditating on his promises and character, we can combat fear with the truth of God's unchanging love and faithfulness. We might not be able to protect our children when they go out from our homes each day. We not, might not be able to protect ourselves, but we know that God goes with us. Faith invites us to cast our anxieties upon the Lord, knowing that he cares for us. Fear, however, magnifies our worries and intensifies our anxieties. A life of discipleship involves choosing faith over fear, entrusting our concerns to the one who calms the storms, within and without. Dear friends, the story of Jesus calming the storm serves as a reminder that faith and fear coexist in our lives all the time. 
And as disciples, our journey is not about eradicating fear, but about cultivating a faith that is stronger than the fears. It is about learning to rest in the arms of our Savior, knowing that he holds us secure, even when the winds and waves of life threaten to capsize our boat. May the story encourage us to deepen our faith, seeking refuge in the midst of life's storms. Let us follow Jesus' example and embrace the peace that comes from trusting God's power and presence. And as we navigate the waters of discipleship, may our faith in the one who calms the storm enable us to weather life's challenges with an unwavering hope and unshakable courage. Amen? Amen. And may the peace of Christ that surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and minds today and always in Christ Jesus. We will sing together our hymn of the day, How Firm a Foundation, number 463. We'll remain seated today as we sing this hymn. As you are able, I invite you to join me in standing either in body or in spirit, as today we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed, saying together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, dead, and buried. 
he descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, life everlasting. We pray for our world, remembering especially those places where there is poverty and hunger, where there is violence and warfare, where individuals and communities struggle to thrive and survive because of a lack of access to proper housing, to healthy food, to education and health care, to work that brings dignity and purpose. We pray for those who seek to challenge and transform structures and relationships that exploit and oppress. We pray for your peace and your justice. We pray for our communities, thinking especially for those who continue to suffer because of disease, sickness, or grief, those who are ill, those who are caring for others, those who have lost loved ones, those seeking to bring hope and help in difficult situations. We remember those poor countries where there is insufficient access to medical care, Fill us with compassion for all who are suffering, recognizing our common need and our common humanity. We pray for your creation, God of life. We mourn the tragic loss of habitat, of wildlife, of biodiversity. We recognize the devastating impact of human greed and overconsumption upon the natural world around us. We pray for a change of heart and a change of practice here and now in order to protect the world for those who come after us. We pray for our particular concerns and needs. We remember those known to us who are unwell at home or in the hospital, those who are living with disability and pain, those who struggle with their mental health, those who are anxious about what the future might hold. We pray for your peace and your power in our lives. We pray that we may recognize your presence at our side even in the midst of the storms of life. We pray that we may trust <clears throat> in your victory of love beyond all our suffering and present sadness. We offer these prayers and all of our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, <clears throat> temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen and amen. I invite you to be seated. And I invite the ushers to come forward at this time to receive this morning's tithes and offerings.
again to stand as you are able and let us pray lord jesus you call us to follow you in faith and promise to provide us everything we need for ministry in your name bless these gifts we bring that we may use them faithfully to share the good news of your love and mercy in your holy name we pray amen finally i invite you to receive this blessing children families and all who love them Go out into the world that God has made. Go and play. Go and learn. Go and love others. May you be filled with loving kindness for yourself and everyone around you. May the prayers of your faith community keep you safe, healthy, and full of joy. Amen and amen. We will sing together our sending hymn, Go My Children With My Blessing, number 547.
Go in peace. Share the harvest. Thanks be to God.